it's a, a great pleasure to work with all of you and my friend Steve Dimitro, who I've played hockey with for about 30 years now. Uh, it's interesting, I, uh, I've played hockey since I'm about seven years old, and uh, this is an amazing job. I've now been on Air Force One twice. Uh, the last time I spoke with the president, he and I spoke about how many teeth we'd lost in our respective sports. And the answer for me is two. Uh, what you may not know is the president lost his middle tooth in a basketball game, so I'm at him two to one. <laughs> Look, there's much to commend for what the Ukrainian Congress Committee has done uh, in 40 years. But I also recognize that this honor comes at an extraordinarily difficult time. And um, a lot of what this honor represents is what I'm going to have to earn on this issue in the coming days, weeks, and even years. This is not going to be easy. Because while Chicago is home to an active and vibrant Ukrainian-American community, with an extraordinarily rich culture and heritage that contributes to the very fabric of this city. But today, Ukraine faces a pivotal moment in its history as thousands of protesters have gathered in Kiev's Independence Square. While Ukrainians peacefully assembled to support the Euromaidan Agreement, the government cracked down and responded with excessive force. Ukrainian police forces have met protesters with intimidation and the escalating violence has resulted in the deaths of the protesters. The Ukrainian people are making their demand for freedom and economic growth loud and clear, protesting President Yanukovych's refusal to sign accords with the European Union. This unnecessary use of violence to silence peaceful voices undermines the country's democratic future. Ukrainian leaders must respect their citizens' right to freedom of expression and assembly, which is a bedrock principle in any developing democracy. The United States and Ukraine share an ideal of democracy in which citizens may live free of oppression and may elect their own leaders. When those leaders break their promises, it is even more important that citizens can freely express their discontent. President Yanukovych is willfully ignoring the plurality of those voices, even though he promised the Ukrainian people he would open trade with the EU. Yanukovych turned his back on the citizens and opened his hand to Putin and Russia. These political and trade agreements come at a crucial time in Ukraine's push to grow its economy, which was stuck in the shadow of Soviet dominance until 1991. Though Yanukovych has now said he intends to sign this, the opposition must continue to hold their ground and make their voices heard. We must all closely watch the negotiations between the current administration and the opposition. The United States should continue to stand with the Ukrainian people in the desire for economic growth in a free republic. You are. We are all going to watch this play out both in Ukraine and here in Chicago and in Washington, D.C. This week on Wednesday, you will hear members of Congress, myself included, speak about this issue on the House floor. This has to happen on the Senate floor. There will be hearings about the sanctions. <laughs> I'll be talking with Representative Levin, uh, Representative Marcy Capital, who is an extraordinary friend, as you know, about sending a delegation of members to Kiev to see first what's hand see first one or first hand what is happening and demand the changes that democracy dictates. I have to go forward to continue to earn this honor as we go forward on a daily basis. This is what matters. I want you to know that as Chicagoans and the citizens of this great country, today we are all Ukrainian. Thank you so much for this